Hey, what's up? Nathan here from PH Studios. This is a tutorial from the XNA series to uh, get you ready for the tower defense one. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at a sprite sheet and how to make an animation from each individual frames on the sheet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the end result and then just like the last of uh, several tutorials, I'm just going to walk you through the code instead of coding it from scratch. That seems to work out better and people seem to be happier with that. So, this is a complete sample. Uh, what you saw at the very beginning was the animation. I put below here the number of frames per second. I can change that in the constructor that I call. Now, if I press the enter key, it will restart the animation. So, if I just press enter, it will restart the animation. So, that single animation is what we will see. Now, I did enable this uh, to enable a uh, repeating, so it will automatically repeat and do that. Now, I'm not pressing the enter, I'm not pressing any keys, so it's automatically repeating the animation. And I'm not that, I didn't really spend that much time on the graphics, so it's not a pretty awesome animation or sprite sheet, but it gets the job done just demonstrating it. Okay, so this is what the sprite sheet looks like. I have individual frames here. I have 11 frames. And then each one of these is a frame, and I tell it the number of frames per second to uh, the speed it should go. Now, in the constructor, I'd label it 15 here. I can set it to about 2 here, and it'll go by really slow, 2 frames a second and you can see the animation is slower. Now I can make it 100, but at some point it's going to get way too fast where it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's walk through the code. I'm going to set this back to 15. So let's look at the animation class first. Now this is a very basic class. This is just to get you started with the tower defense. We will be expanding upon this in the tower defense series, but just for the ground level, and then we'll build on that. This is what we will be using. Okay, as the animation progresses, we're going to have an INT index, and that will hold the current frame. So if we're on frame 7, the INT index will be 7. Then we have a texture 2D, which will hold the entire sprite sheet texture. This whole thing will be the texture. Frame width and frame height, these two, will hold each individual frame's width and height. So from here to here to here to here. Just this little ship here, the width and the height. And it's best to keep it standardized because, well, it's going to be a sprite sheet, so you just Use the frame width and frame height to standardize across each frame in the sheet. That way you can do the appropriate drawing that way. Frames per row, the number of frames per row. So six here. The maximum, six here, five here. So the maximum would be six. Number of frames, 11. That's the sprite sheet, 11. This is what you'll pass when you call the constructor. So you will need to know some things about the sprite sheet. You can just open the uh, texture and just count it if you want. Int FPS. Uh, you, this is called for the constructor. You just tell 15 FPS, 2 FPS, whatever. And then string FPS display. This is what will be used for the very bottom where it says player paper animated FPS colon 15. That's the entire FPS display. And the reason I did it that way is because uh, we're going to be getting ready to worry about uh, objects and garbage collection. And the best way to do this is to create a string and then it will just return it. Instead of, you know, every game loop it generates a new string, we just initially generate a string and then we can grab the object that way. Float timer, this is what we'll be using for our game time calculations, and if the timer is greater than a certain amount, uh, we will increment the index. So we'll change to a brand new frame. Delay timer, 
I didn't really implement this yet. I will in the final result. Uh, but what that will be used is when it's repeating, it will be a delay timer. And it'll just do things that way. A bool repeating, this is to enable if you want it to repeat or not. The default will be false. All right, so the constructor, we pass it the content manager, the asset name, which is just the uh, you single left click this and it's the asset name that way. You just pass it to that. The frame width and frame height, you need to know those in order to do the calculations. The number of frames and the int frames per second. And it creates the frames per row is the texture depth width divided by frame width. So that's a simple mathematical calculation and then we don't need to pass it that. FPS display. Again, we generate one string and then every game loop, every draw loop, we just call that string value instead of generating a new string every single loop. I'll discuss more about this as the Tower Defense series gets started. Number of frames that was passed and repeating is default on false. Okay, enable repeating is simple. You just set repeating as true. Disable repeating, you should set repeating to false. Update, if timer is greater than one over frames per second. A simple mathematical thing, if uh, frames per second, if you take one divided by frames per second, that gives you seconds per frame. So, we're just getting, if timer is greater than seconds per frame, then we need to increment the timer. Or increment the index, sorry. And we just increment the index if it's not the number of frames minus one. And we're starting the index at zero. Since that's usually what, like, arrays and everything start at, so I just figured it would be best to start at index zero for that. So index zero will be the first frame. And then it will go to, let's see if we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 0 to 10 or to 11 total frames. So that's why we do it this way. So 11 minus 1 is 10. So if index is not equal to 10, we increment index. Otherwise, if it's repeating, we set it to 0. And then we just set the timer is equal to 0. Now, for the delay timer, uh, you can just uh, put it in this else if, and in the final code, you can look at it and see what I did there. Okay, if timer is not greater than the seconds per frame, we just increment timer plus game time dot elapsed game time dot total seconds. So we just increment the timer until it's greater than that. Restart animation just sets the index as equal to zero. Now, draw, there's two draw methods. One of them, we just call it the sprite batch and the position. The other one, we call it, we call and pass it sprite batch, position, rotation, and scale. So just like you were drawing a s simple texture, this is basically what it's doing, except one thing here. And this applies for both methods, so I'll just talk to one of them. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we need to get the X value, Y value, and the standardized frame width and frame height. So the X value, we have six a maximum of six frames in the row for a single row. So if index is greater than 6 we need or we need to subtract its index from 6 so as you see here index minus row number times frames per row so frames per row is 6 row number is whatever row we're currently on which is the index divided by frames per row I know that's a little confusing but let's say we're on frame uh, this one right here which is one zero one two three four five six seven. So we're on frame seven. It should be row two. So if we go back to the animation class, the row number is seven 
divided by 6, which is the maximum frames per row. So 7 divided by 6, integer division, returns 1. So we are in the row number 1. This is row 0. This is row 1. So that's what the row number does. And the row number is used to determine row number times frames per row. So if we're on 6, or I'm sorry, 7, it returns that we're on row number 1. So we take index, which is 7, minus 1 times 6, so 6. So 7 minus 6 is 1. Now we'll go back to here. Uh, row number 1, this is 0, and this is 1. So we are getting the one index of one on the x direction here times the frame width because zero. Let's assume that we're selecting frame number one, this one right here. This is index one, so one times frame width. To start it, we need to get here. So one times frame width will get us right between these two points. So that's how we start it. Now the Y start is a little bit similar. It's row number times frame height. Now let's go back to picking uh, frame seven. Remember that's row number one and index of seven. So row number times frame height. Row number is 1 times frame height is whatever we decide. And that will give us down here as a start. So we're starting from here and here. So that's what those two things do. And then the frame width and the frame height just standardized uh, width and height dimensions we needed. And that's all there is to it. Alright, so that's it for the animation class. Now let's look at the game1.cs. So I make an object of animation called whatever you want. I call mine player animation due to the player paper. And in the initialize method, that's when we say new animation. And again, we have to pass it content. We pass it the asset name. We pass it the frame width, frame height, a number of frames and the uh, frames per second. And if you're not sure what the format is, you can highlight over animation and you can see the uh, what you need to pass it. So content manager content, strain asset, int frame width, int frame height, int number of frames, and int frames per second. Okay. Now in load content, I just do the sprite batch, that's default, and I just, the only thing I did here was font, sprite font, just so we can uh, display the FPS. Okay, all I did here was enable the keyboard. If keys.enter was pressed, we, we, we restart the animation. And then we have to call player animation.update to game time. Okay, for the draw, of course, we'd call begin, and at the very end, we call end. And in between those two, we call player animation dot draw. And we pass it, I'm calling the one that has rotation and scaling. So we pass it, sprite batch, the location, the position we want the uh, sprite animation to be, the rotation value, let's see, well, let's make this 45 and see what happens, and the scale amount. Sprite batch dot draw string. That's just a simple draw string. Okay. So that's forty five degrees. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to extend on this and do sort of corrections. This is just to get the base going. 
And then in the Tower Defense series, we will do all sorts of testings and things like that. And uh, it'll just get things going. And you can mess with the delay timer if you want. Or you can wait until my sample is uploaded, which will be with this video, and see what it's like. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next tutorial is a... Uh, I think it's going to be an After Effects tutorial. But the next uh, XNA tutorial will be A-Star Pathfinding. So I hope to see you next time.